Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Planet Coaster, and you know the park by now, it's Cadnam Castle. So this week it's time to crack open the rum, put on your peg legs and shiver your timbers, because we're welcoming a water coaster to the park, because you know, log flumes are just so cliché. Oh yeah, you guys, and as always, there's a story behind that. There was supposed to be a log flume in this park. It was just going to be plonked in the park, and it wasn't going to be majorly themed. But then I found Krampus Expedition, and that sort of showed me what a decent water coaster could actually look like. And I mean, it feels like this park wouldn't have a shoot-the-shoot -shoot flume because they're just too, you know, drowny. And a log flume for a park of this style is a little bit too stand up and die -y. So there is a happy medium between the two, and it's kind of like a tame water coaster. And this is what we've got and I like it actually. Um, so this is the water coaster that we've got here. So we come into the station and then we come into the first turn here. Uh, then we come into the lift hill. Now the lift hill on these are a bit weird because they first have to bring you out of the water and then level it off in case they have to evac and then it goes up the lift hill. I think this is set to 25 degrees. It's not a particularly steep lift hill. They wouldn't be anyway. Uh, and then of course it comes into the coaster element. So it comes around into a first turn, into an airtime hill, and then into a last turn where you kill as much of the speed as you possibly can at the top and then drop it down into the uh, water trough and it's only a 45 degree drop you don't really want to do much more than this uh, with these coasters in game because otherwise the drop looks a bit rubbish <laughs> so that's what we're going for here 45 degree jots into the flume uh, and then of course you've just got the water bit the water section that then meanders its way back round into a final what would be in real life a brake run um a block brake run but in planet coaster it is just drive tires and stuff and then of course there would be some kind of a story or elements or theming or whatever going on in this area here just to bring it to uh, bring it to life a little bit so this did have a completely different configuration i don't know if i kept a picture so edit to me either edit my voice out or edit the picture in you choose <laughs> but ultimately the station was all the way up here and i had plans for the queue to be in this area uh, and then there was going to be some kind of um bridge that goes over the drop into this area here but i binned it off it just wasn't going to work with the with the area it made the pirate area too big and this area at the top just didn't make sense anymore so i changed it changed the layout and this is uh this is what we ended up with i need to put maintenance and service areas in at some point so of course this pool is not going to be this big and i think i might need to extend the break runs slightly just to accommodate for buildings and stuff so this is it for now. Uh, in terms of the actual area, it's of course pirate themed. What kids park is not complete without a pirate theme? Answer is none. Uh, so we've got a good old pirate thing going on here. Going for pirate, pirate village. This bit here is not a building. Don't panic. This is where the uh, overrun for the lake and the, the river and whatever that we've got at the entrance of the park here. Uh, this is where this is going to be. So this is going to get done this episode, I think. And then of course we've got a pirate ship ride, which may as well not be in the park because they're just rubbish in planet coaster no one wants to go on it but hey it's here it's a supporting ride it's done and then you've got rocktopus sitting proudly in the middle and then of course you've got over this way the um the whirlywig by the way there is something in game that's freaking my game out and i think it's the supports for the gci as you can see i've got like quite a bit of stutter in an early park it's definitely the gci supports 100 percent so apologies, there's nothing I can do unless I delete the sports and I'm not going to do that. Uh, so we've also got a couple of buildings that are going to go in this area. I've started to flesh out how I want them to be laid out. So this one's going to have pillars, for example, and this one's not. This one's going to be a bit more of a, a, a town frontage. Don't know whether it's going to be this jaunty angle or whether it's going to be a flat front. Because, you know, I only deal with <laughs> I only deal with flat fronted buildings. I wanted to do something slightly different. So I need to get some inspiration, uh, some inspiration here. The other Coasters, by the way, are in the park. To give you a bit of a, a preview, there's one here, uh, there's one here, and there's one here. I wonder if you can guess what they are. Let me know in the comments below if you have any idea at all. Anyway, I'm off to go and build. I'll see you in a minute. All right, then, you guys, it's part of the way through the episode. And as is true tradition, it's time to talk about unfinished things. And my God, there are a lot of unfinished things to show you. <laughs> but this is the village. And I need to find a new way of saying this is exactly how I thought it was going to turn out in my head. Because that's getting boring week in, week out. But this is how I wanted this to look. Now it's in the right configuration. This has taken on quite a few different configurations in its past time. And let's just talk about this, by the way. Uh, so I know 
know that some of you will already be pointing out that these coasters in real life will have a bunny hop before the trough. Um, Planet Coaster kind of ties your hands with this. You have to enter the trough at 45 degrees and the bunny hops in real life don't enter that steeply. They normally know more than 30 degrees. And putting a bunny hop in a Planet Coaster version of this track just doesn't look right. So that's why I've sacrificed it and that is just why it's one singular drop. I've taken the design decision to just remove the bunny hop completely. I'd love to have had it in, it just wasn't going to work. But what I have done is I've started to put the concrete channeling in here. So this is all custom concrete channeling. It's using the TMTK concrete pieces, as I always do with rapids and log flumes. And it looks all right, actually. I am all right with this. I mean, it's not exactly the same as real life. Uh, but it's kind of good enough. It does it does what it needs to do. It represents the concrete channel. And then here what I'm doing is, is I'm putting down the concrete flooring or the concrete bed of the actual pool itself. I want it to be this blue, almost white colour. I want it to feel quite fresh and quite vibrant. So that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for here. Started to dot around a couple of bits of theming. Uh, so of course it's going to have the pirate ships. The pirate ship make a return. <laughs> Happy days. And I'm going to be able to do some effects and stuff with, uh, with this in here as well. So in terms of the pathway, I did originally have this completely straight and flush to the drop. I actually decided to take some cues from Krampus Expedition on this one and have it as a wavy path. And that's purely because, well, Krampus Expedition looks pretty cool, to be fair. And I've done wavy paths el elsewhere in the park, right? So we've got this bit here that's a wave and you've got this bit here that's a wave. And then it just felt like this was just so out of place. I don't think anybody would have noticed if I kept it that way, but... I've just decided to move it and actually I quite like it. It gives it a bit more personality. So uh, I've also put maintenance area in here. I have just stolen Krampus Expedition here. Um, I've just ripped it off completely because I can't really find any other decent maintenance shed configurations to put in. So I've just stolen, stolen that design. Uh, then of course I've just lined the pool as I normally do with the base from the Haunted House pack, the Spook. Spooky pack uh, and then just put some mulch down just to hide the edge of the pool I need to do the same strategy over here and hide the edge of the path and I also need to do the same here to hide the edge of the uh, the edge of the queue and, and whatever I do need to finish the concrete um, stuff by the way I haven't done this bend and I haven't done this first bend either so I'll come back and uh, come back and do that inside the station we've got a little bit of theming going on I'm just getting a feel for how I want the station to be there's no direct theming and stuff um, I've spent, and you're going to see this in a moment, I've spent quite a lot of time doing the buildings and making those feel right from the outside. So inside here, it's just kind of getting a feel for how I want this to be from the inside. So lots of wood. And then, of course, you'd have some kind of stone on the floor because you're dealing with water. So wood would rot. Stone, especially when you've got this kind of stone, isn't so slippy because you've got grooves and whatever in the brick. So that's kind of what we're going for. That's what we're going for here. But I have decided to use a slightly different texture on the other side because this would be more of a hard-wearing maintenance area as opposed to a hard-wearing foot area. So uh, that's what we're that's what we're going for here. This is the... Oh, that's the wrong camera. Uh, this is the design of the station from the outside then. I wanted it to be in this L-shape configuration. Loving how this is. And I wanted there to be a tower there as well so uh, it's just like a bit of a focal point of, of this area now this station design hasn't changed so when the station was over here this is exactly how I imagined it to be uh, but of course now you can see that this station over here wouldn't have made any sense to this village at all so I'm glad that I took the chance to sort of reconfigure uh, oh by the way I did extend the um, break run here I know I said in the first update I didn't know if I was going to but I did I took that opportunity and, and off we go so I've also put in a bit of a, um, a tower here so there are some triggered effects on here that's for the pirate ship so I can try and make the prestige on the pirate ship even remotely competitive for all the other rides in the uh, in the park so I've lined it up to triggers and stuff so but like there you go there it goes there it goes uh, but I, I like how it is it's supposed to be like a bit of a fort feeling uh, protecting the town from the inside in case marauders I don't know how to say that uh, marauders 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 Invasions. <laughs> Invaders, there you go. <laughs> Close enough, that'll do. In case in case the town gets invaded, so that's what that's there for. Right, so let's talk about these buildings because I have done so much work to make these look decent. And you're now looking at this going, This doesn't look decent, Chacho. This looks like it's a mess. And that's the whole that's the whole purpose. Now, you know that I'm famed for my flat square buildings. This is a square building, but 
I've decided I want to go intricate with these details because the pirate Tudor stuff or the Tudor pirate stuff is intricate. So what I've got here is like this little walkway through into a restaurant area here. And I'm saying that this may at one point have been some kind of, you know, uh, grab and go unit or whatever, but it's not anymore. It's been boarded up, but it forms part of the uh, of the entire building. And then when we come inside here, uh, we're starting with the pirate theme in here. This, this whole building needs pirating up. Like, I've just started to throw stuff down to get a feel for it, but uh, I started to get this, this idea of what this this is going to feel like inside, you know, piratey, piratey type, type stuff. And then I'm um, mixing up the heights and the width of the buildings to give it a bit of personality. I keep saying pers like everything having a personality, but it sort of comes to life. It has to have a, it has to have a thing, doesn't it? So that's what we're going for there. And then, of course, we've got a gift shop, which I have done on the inside. But there's two entrances. There's one here and there is one here. Uh, so if we walk inside here and then just look through there, it's all your usual gift shop stuff. There's nothing in here that will be that will surprise you. You would have seen all of this before. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted, again, to give that that whole piratey type feel. Uh, and then, of course, I'm starting to mix up the building and stuff going on in here just so you've got a... Um, Bit of variation to go with. Uh, I haven't done the side here, and nor have I done the back. That's still to come, because <laughs> these buildings take absolutely forever to do. But I have done this side because this is the guest facing side, and I wanted to make a feature of this little archway stuff. So I needed to sort of like work out how that was going to go. And then this one, this is the one with the pillars. Uh, this one is loosely decorated because I need to put the roof on to know what the visual is from down here to know what I need to actually focus my attentions on uh, in here but I have done some detailing inside here so we've got ice creams and um, uh, milkshakes and I've moved the shops aside so I can have an actual serving counter here you saw me do something similar in Wild of your muse it's not the same I haven't pulled it in from anywhere this is this is bespoke but it's very similar and then, of course, you've just got some exposed brick and whatever going on uh, inside here. And then this building is a bit of a treacherous one because I wanted to have these annexes or these um, dormers that are sitting on the top. But the only way you can do it is by having them this thick. <sighs> Actually, I wonder if I do because... I'm going to play this one out. But anyway, this dormer in the front does need to be this thick. But I don't think the windows will be visible on this roof. Now I'm seeing it like this. I think I've made a, a design faux pas. Hmm. Play that one out. But anyway, I've started to do these windows. They look a little bit like portcullises, um, which is cool. I kind of like it. They were thinner. They were thinner windows at one point, but they didn't look right. So I've made them wider and made them like shop fronts. So yeah, I like it. And then inside here, exactly the same. I've just started to like kit it out with a bit of a feeling, but it, it's no, it needs pirating up. But I've just like put stuff on the roof and lights in and, and, and whatever, just so I can get a bit of a bit of a vibe going on. Uh, pirate ship wise, I have coloured the pad in blue mulch. Uh, this kind of would be a thing where they would dye the um, uh, the wood chippings and stuff that they would put down to make it look like water. Uh, and then of course I've I've done the queue line and stuff. This this ride is not going to get a ma massive queue, and even the Drayton Manor pirate ship doesn't have a long queue line. So that's kind of what we've done, what we've done here. And then just to keep the kids away from the actual ride area itself, I've put in the fence, of course. And then there will be some kind of natural barrier here in the way of a garden or something along those lines. And then we come to the PS de la resistance of buildings. And this thing took forever to do. But, ugh. So I tried something similar in uh, Grosvenor Gardens and I don't think I quite pulled Grosvenor Gardens off. It didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to. It was good enough, but it wasn't exactly as I wanted it to. This is exactly how I want it. Like, I don't think I even need to pirate this up. I think this works perfectly as a Tudor building because it's got all of like the usual split levels that you find with the Tudorness and... Lots of variation. So, like, for example, here, you've got all of the brackets underneath that are supporting this this uh, little outie 
bit. I don't even know what they're called. So let's just call it an alti bit. Uh, <laughs> and then you've got actual plaster supports here for the bits that stick out even wider. Um, and then this one doesn't stick out as much. And this one doesn't stick out at all. This one doesn't have windows. So there's lots of variation going on here. And just to show you what it looks like from the top. This is what it looks like from the top. So I couldn't do an interior even if I wanted to. Because it's an absolute mess. Um, but this is how I started. So you start with a square or rectangle building. Then you start building your outy bits. Um, your protruding bits. Um, that's what she said. So... <laughs> got to get one in every episode so that's what i've done here and then i've done the same over this side and then i've just of course um made this a, a watchtower and then once you've got all of your protruding bits sorted you can start to detail it up with with different bits and then just varying how it looks so yeah i like i like it and then of course what i've done is the front here Exactly the same. I've started through the detailing here. There's not so much detail down here because there's going to be a sign here, uh, and then this bit will be part of the part of the pool, so you wouldn't have too much of a um, a thing going on. But then, of course, you've got the watchtower up here. So this is what would be like the gatehouse of the town, and this would be where you would shoot it and stuff. I don't know whether I'm going to trigger this one up to the coaster going by because um, it doesn't feel like this coaster is an attack on the town. So. I think I'm just going to uh, going to leave it. And then elsewhere, I have decided to not do this area in full uh, this episode. It's going to be in a later episode. But what I have done is I bought the water in so I know where it's going to be. And then just started to line off the um, the key all here so that it's, uh, it's nice and flush. So I can actually finish the foliage and stuff along here. And this is going to be an access point for a bridge that will eventually be here that leads to the coaster that's in this area here. So this is all starting to like make sense and stuff. So um, yeah, I like it. So this is the town from the top. <sighs> Told you there's lots to see. Lots of unfinished stuff. So I better go and change that and finish it. See you in a minute. Ah, oh, here be pirates. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what accent that was. That was a really bad pirate. Anyway. Welcome to the Buck, Buccaneer Bay. Yeah, the alliteration continues and I'm not even sorry, but guys, I love how this has turned out. This is just so, so, so good. So this is a done for now stamp, but it's a different one this week because the problem with doing such an intricate design of building and an intricate build is you always find things that you want to change. Like, for example, just before I pressed record, I ended up changing the trim on the roof because it just wasn't sitting quite right. There's still stuff I know that I'm going to come back and, and change all along the way. So... Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you how it is right now. I'm not doing any more to it. But this is the village. And guys, oh, including the stuttering because of all the peace count and stuff in this area, I love how this has turned out. And I'm so glad I stuck with the, the Tudor stucco style pirate as opposed to trying to mix it up. I had grand ideas of there being different styles and different colours and all sorts and it just didn't work out just wasn't right and i'm glad i stuck with it because this is the this is the finished product and even better oh if you walk through this this bit here oh, i can't wait to show you the tejicam tour because look at these sight lines some of the stuff that you see along here is just incredible like i love it even even if i say so myself i'm i'm here for it and when the pirate ship is going it comes right out here and it's just so foreboding given that it's such a forgotten asset in the game oh Yes. So this is how it's looking from this side as well. So I, I know that I don't show you many, uh, many other angles. So this just sits perfectly. It just sits exactly where I wanted it to in the park. And it looks exactly as I wanted it to. This idea of using the light blue uh, smooth concrete underneath to give the water some color just makes it look like it's a proper chlorinated pool of water that would be isolated from all other water sources and it's just like kept clean and, and, and everything. So yeah, I love it, I love it, I love it. Right, let's show you around because there's quite a lot to show you. I'll start over here with the building. Uh, lots of touching up that's been done on this area, right? So lots of stuff going on. Um, lots of detailing and lots of changes and, and whatever. But Theme Makers Toolkit has, has brought this to life a little bit. I didn't want to overdo it. Because this isn't Fantasia Land, this isn't Garda Land, this is supposed to be Portons Park. So the level of theming and stuff is supposed to be not minimal, but it's not supposed to be expensive. So that's what we're going for here. The, the, the money was spent on the building and making it look good. I have had to swap up the textures on the roof. Um, this is actually the Theme Makers Toolkit thatch that I used on the Tiki Bar on top of the Dark Riding grove and gardens um colored black and that's because we just don't have the asset the shingle asset in the right uh in the right angle so i've just ended up using a different a different texture but you know what now that i've got the wood over here it actually feels right it doesn't feel out of place 
So I'm okay with it like this. Uh, it can stay. <laughs> the pirate ship turned out so well. I mean, it is such a forgotten, trashy ride. The prestige is awful. It just... I don't even know why Frontier didn't love it as much as they should. But it looks decent enough to be in this area. And I hate using the T option of camera because that happens with the, with the camera. Um, so yeah... It, it looks all right. It sits there quite nicely on the sight line. The blue mulch brings it to life and then a bit of pirate stuff around it and you're good to go. Like, it is it is what it is. I need to throw loads of guests in the park and see how well ridden this ride is. But the prestige is only like 350, 380 and it's the most optimal it's going to be even with triggered stuff. So it is what it is. Let's not complain about it. Rocktopus is sitting quite nicely in the middle here. Um, I didn't want to do much more to this. It felt like this needed to be a ride that we just threw in the middle of a plaza because they had space, threw up a couple of and it is what it is and I've put the entrance sign here because this was causing a bit of an obstruction here so I've just pulled it forward and uh, and be done with it the actual coaster itself um, is stuttering like anything <laughs> guys seriously when you get this park if you want to run it at any decent frames the one thing you can do is get rid of the uh, get rid of the custom supports on the GCI and it will make it better i promise i've tried it out so anyway i love how this is sitting like the foliage here that's causing a barrier between the queue line and the actual um pool of water itself just it's perfect it's exactly as i wanted it to be the cattle pen is just in the right place the fact it wraps around is is everything i wanted it to be and of course i've done all of the fine touches on the ride as well so it's got all of its um emergency lighting and it's got all of its catwalks and stuff so yeah i love it and if we go inside the station uh there we go inside the station uh, i've just done a lot of touching up in here so a bit of detailing uh, in this area it's a bit of a not a pre pre-show area because it wouldn't have a pre-show area but you could call it a pre-show if you like. Uh, and then inside here, oh, guys, it's just, it's supposed to be this this idea of loose theming, right? And it's exactly, I, uh, perfectly pirate. It's just, oh, no, that's her. Uh, <laughs> it's perfectly pirate. Lots of stuff thrown around. Remembering, it's not Fantasialand. Uh, this is supposed to be Portons, so it's for kids, and it's supposed to be a little bit, like, adventury and whatever. But I have intentionally designed this coaster to see the drop from this point kind of a bit of inspiration from tidal wave at thought park in the sense that the, the station is in the splash zone that's what i wanted here i wanted you to be able to look out and see the uh speed see the splash zone as well as the boats coming around the corner and stuff it just gives something to look at when you're waiting to board uh it gives a bit of intrepidation and whatever so uh, right let's come back out this way because we've got some buildings to look at. So we've got our fort sitting quite pretty here. I, yeah, it, I like it. Like, it's simple enough to be there. And um, it's like a bit of a feature. It's a bit of a focal feature. It just makes it all make sense. Love it. This building here, oh, this was a labour of love. And I'm so glad that it turned out the way that it did with its roof on. I was very, very worried that it wasn't going to turn out the way I wanted it to. But I am so chuffed with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. So inside uh, inside here, uh, we've just got restaurant-y type stuff. So uh, I changed camera. Uh, I've just put a load of pirate stuff on here. And then, of course, this is still the, the stuff along here. So you'll see this. You've seen this in the coaster station. These are supposed to be sails. And they are literally just the western um, drapes, coloured white. And then just thrown around with a few rope bits and, and whatever just to make it look like their sails hanging in from the ceiling so that's what we're going for here and then of course you've got some seating and stuff in here just to give it a bit of personality and then uh, all of the shops and whatever that you'd expect to see uh, so i'm happy with i'm happy with that and then if we come back on the outside tada! oh i just love it um by the way guys just let you know i haven't finished inside the gift shop here because the coaster that's coming in next week's episode will finish the gift shop there's some, some theming stuff that i want to uh drag through so uh that's why i've not finished inside but the outside is done like the look and feel on the outside is exactly as i want it to be and i love the the intricacies with all of the um uh, with all of the roofing I, I love the fact that it's it's still a flat square building or rectangular building but it's now got quite a lot of intricacies going on here it just looks it looks the part it looks it looks ideal love it love it love it so coming over to these two uh so you won't be surprised to know that yes i did come into the problem that i thought i was going to <laughs> and this is my solution because i'll be honest i'm too lazy to fix it <laughs> plus well i did try to fix it it didn't quite turn out right anyway so uh, this felt better than 
the solution that I actually came up with. So that's what I've done here. Lots of detailing on the outside just to bring it to life. Inside I've kept nice and simple. Uh, I don't really want to do much else to it. This isn't going to be like a highly detailed part of the park. It's just a, a sweet shop and stuff. So I'll keep that as it is. And then the ice cream shop, uh, I have... <laughs> I've just noticed that the sign is probably a bit of a collision risk. People are going to be banging their heads. That probably wouldn't be there. But hey, it stays there for now. Uh, but this is the idea that I wanted with this one. To have that really low roof. So like, where is this one here? It's really high. And uh, it's sort of like tower. Well, it doesn't tower. Not as much as the other one. But it's quite high. This one is quite low. And I wanted to have that contrast between the two, between the two buildings. There's also a reason. So you can see the coaster that's going to be in the background here. But... Uh, yeah, I've kept this nice and simple. So as a result, the detailing didn't need much doing, right? Uh, it, it actually looked all right, uh, all right as it was. And then when you come inside here, you've got obviously your uh, your counter, and then just nice and simple. Kept it nice and simple in here. I think I do want to come back and do another pass on this. Uh, I'm not quite happy with it, but it's good enough for now. Uh, it does it does what it needs to do. So, this uh, is the area. By the way, I haven't done the back side of these ones yet, by the way. <laughs> Just in case, you, in case you're wondering. Uh, we're dealing with this coaster in the next episode, so I'm not going to tell you too much about it, other than it's in, and I've designed this part of the area around the layout, so this will all make sense when we, when we put it in. Now, of course, this doesn't have a name yet, uh, because I'm filming this in advance and you know this already. So it's time to uh, cross back over to me in the past. Uh, Chacho, I'm me of the future. You're the me of the past. Me of the future is talking to me of the past. You might want to get that right. It feels like that's quite important, right? <laughs> Anyway, we've got ourselves a name. Welcome to the park, Plunderfalls. Cameron, thank you so much for your suggestion. You are the winner this week. A very, very deserved winner. And it fits perfectly in the park. Thank you so much. So, guys, that's the end of the episode. I really do appreciate you getting to the end of this one. If you can probably tell, I'm moving. And that's why the acoustics on this segment feels a little bit weird. Because I am literally sat in an empty room. And it's weird. But that doesn't stop the episodes coming. There's just no premiere next week. Uh, so, we are doing a Marathon Spinner. That needs a name. However, I am going to test your ability to follow instructions. Your names must contain the word Kraken. As in Kraken. Because Spike did an awesome sign and I want to reuse it. So I will be discounting any names that do not contain Kraken. Please just follow orders. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys. Please look after yourselves. Let's go for a ride. See you soon. Bye bye.